Hello, and welcome to Exchanging Eternal Truths, brought to you by Expanding Your Faith Ministries in Anderson, South Carolina. I'm your host, author Heather Lancaster, and I'm happy to be joined yet again by my husband, Greg Lancaster of Eternal Truths Ministries. And this is episode four in a series we're doing calling The Leaven of Man's Wisdom. And this week, we're going to talk more about God's solution and God's wisdom. So, Greg, thanks for coming. Happy to be here. And, uh, we're excited that the uh, Holy Spirit has spun this into a, a fourth episode. We did not plan that, but uh, as we're discussing and, and God, God is bringing specific verses and examples to mind, it's kind of spun into that. We're enjoying it here. We Hopefully you're enjoying it there. If you haven't seen the previous or listened to the previous episodes, we encourage you to do that uh, to get the full context of that. But we are talking about man's wisdom versus God's wisdom. And the events of 2020, we began to, if we had sickness in our bodies, we would begin, we thought the solution based on what we were, what man was telling us and the medical experts were telling us was that the way you get better is to seclude and isolate. And these things are in direct contrast with the word of God. We, we touched on James five fourteen and 15, uh, is any among you sick? Then they must call the elders of the church and they will pray over them, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will restore the one who is sick. You can't do that if you're isolated at home. If you're staying at home and, and that's the, what you've got comfortable doing is only getting your service time through TV, internet, uh, those things, which they have, they, all those things have value. The word of God does not return void. You're hearing a message. It's always a good thing, but it's not God's long-term solution for the way we're supposed to live our lives. We also said you have to use common sense. Sure. So that like, if you are contagious, if you are, uh, as you put it, making donations in the royal throne room, <laughs> then... The porcelain throne room. Mm-hmm, then you can use use common sense there however what we're seeing is that taken to an extreme yeah are you using that as an excuse not to do your ministry obligations or or are you forsaking the gathering of yourselves together out of convenience or out of comfort or out of fear sure and and that's that's one of the things we saw is people not gathering for fear of getting something from somewhere else and that's where we talked about when we go out we don't expect to get sick. Right. We we take that Psalm 91 very seriously and we had started doing that before before 2020. Yeah. And so you do you you have to not let that fear of what might happen. And and that's I think really where we where we kind of went crazy in 2020. It was this this fear of what might happen. Yep. Maybe somebody else has something, and if they don't know they have it, and they bring it, and then I catch it, right? And and that's where we've gone off the off the rails, in my opinion. Yeah, and, and fear is the enemy of faith. But I'm going to reread Matthew eight one two and three. When Jesus came down from the mountainside, large crowds followed him. A man with leprosy came and knelt before him and said, "Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean." Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing, he said, be clean. Immediately he was clean, cleansed of his leprosy. We talked about how we have wisdom and we have life experience, sec, secular life experience, church life experience. In the context of the, of the time, this uh, leprous, this person with leprosy uh, approaching anyone was a death sentence. Mm -hmm. They could immediately be killed for doing that. They were supposed to stay separate and isolated, but he had such a desire to be well that he risked immediate death to approach Jesus to be healed, uh, and which is what faith. Uh, you talk about a person in the worst kind of situation, and yet his faith was great, and uh, Jesus recognized that, and and Jesus didn't, Jesus could have rejected that. He could he could have stood on Levitical law and said, you are unclean, get away from me. He could have said, well, how many of us know there's no distance in prayer? Uh, you just stay right over there and I'll, I'll just kind of wave my hand at you from a distance. You know, those, those church 
phrases that we get so comfortable using. No, Jesus didn't hesitate. He reached out and and touched him and healed him with no thought that he would get sick. And then if, if anyone's sitting there saying, well, yeah, but that's Jesus. Well, yeah. Everything, and and I have said this before, everything that Jesus did, he did as a man. Yep. Yes, he had, yes, he was fully God, but he did it as a man to give us an example, because if he had done it only as God, then we could have never been able to emulate him. Mm -hmm. And yet the scripture tells us that we are to be like him. Yes. Jesus himself said, these things will you do and greater. And you've got the reference for that. It was John 14, 12 through 14, where Jesus says, truly is addressing the disciples. Truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing, and they will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father. And I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. And I think the important part of that verse isn't the fact that we're going to do what he does and greater. It says, if anyone yep. who believes in my name, and I think we've gotten very comfortable with saying that, only preachers can say this right. or only people behind a pulpit can say this or you look at the 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 fivefold ministry you know the the apostles and prophets and pastors and teachers and evangelists and you look at that and you go well they're the ones supposed to be doing all the work yep. but what the scripture tells us is they were given as gifts to the church to train the body, that's every other believer, to do the work of the ministry. Every believer is supposed to be doing the work of the ministry. Yes. And I think, especially in Western church, West, you know, and this, this is Western, the Western world, Europe, America, We've gotten so used to expecting the person behind the pulpit to do all the work that we've forgotten that it's for us to. Absolutely, yeah. We, we we just say, oh, well, that's something that the, the pastor uh, or the preacher will do. Uh, that's their responsibility. But no, the great mandate that Jesus gave us is for everybody. It's for every believer. Go ye therefore into all the world, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's for us. It, and no matter what... If you say, oh, I don't have a ministry or I don't have training. Jesus, in that moment, deputized you. The moment that you chose Christ as your Savior, you were not only saved, praise Jesus, but you were also deputized with his authority. Anything you ask in my name, I will do it. The greater things than I that I did in my earthly life, you will do greater than that. That's That's for all of us. It's not for the select few or those that supposedly have greater faith it's it's uh for all of us and getting deputized we're only qualified to speak on the american church and and the good and the bad of the american church and it's not all bad even though we're bringing up some some negative examples here but but i would suspect it's not like that in in a lot of the world the churches are in other parts of the world but we have that authority that jesus wants us to uh, to not be afraid to to go and heal uh, in his name and, and to pray for people and like heather said earlier that uh we got f afraid to to reach out to hug to touch one another even in fellowship and uh, just a, a quick humorous aside since this is a heavy message i've got a, a very dear friend of, of mine is like a spiritual son to me and he he doesn't really like physical contact he shies away from it just as a personal thing and has he's not a hypochondriac or, or anything like or germaphobe or anything like that to my knowledge he's just not a touchy-feely guy and uh, I hadn't seen him in a while I went over and I just told him I said I'm fixing to hug you so just deal with it and I said the word of God tells us to greet each other with a holy kiss like that and he goes you know a hug would be fine <laughs> 
<laughs> so he, he he weighed it out, and he said, "Maybe I'm maybe I'm I'm wrong on this whole. I'm all turned around on this hug issue here. So it could be much much worse." So, <laughs> but you know, using a comedic example there, but we did we let that fear seep in where we were awkward around people. You didn't know who you could hug at church. You didn't know who you could shake their hand at church. And it, we still see. I'm, I'm seeing that today. Even there's some people that are still like that, and where and I, you know, as a leader in the church, I'm sensitive to that. So I'm not trying to put people in an uncomfortable position. So I read the body language and and act accordingly. But that's not God's will for our life to be in fear. Certainly not in the, in the unified body of Christ. It's it's one of those things, and it's like you know you saw that with family, you saw that, it, but you still you still see that. It, it surprises me how many people got a, away from human touch, mm-hmm. and are to this day recoiling from it to some extent. Yeah. I mean, what harm did we do ourselves by cut? You know, we cut ourselves off. From all human contact. Yeah. And now we're skittish of every human out there. That's not healthy. That's not what God wants for us. That's yeah. not. You can't extend the right hand of fellowship, as they say. Right. When when somebody is petrified of touching another person. Yeah. And we're not uh, making fun of anybody like no. that. Uh, no. If you're un- still uncomfortable doing that and then it's something you can address talk to god about that our goal is that no one no believer especially would walk in fear or have any kind of trepidation when they get together with other christians but we certainly not uh making light of that and that feeling and and so i think i said in the first episode of this that you know when the fear behind the virus was really powerful and the devil got everything he wanted it got us to question each other and and got us to quit meeting one another got us to isolate got us to hide our light behind masks and all those those things so he was a at least a short-term win for the devil there and we um but now we know his tactics and we need to uh circumvent those things and do the things we need to do and heather i think said this at the end of last time we don't look for excuses to not get together or to do our uh, ministry obligations you know we don't look for excuses or i'm just speaking for myself uh if it's rainy or foggy i I don't that doesn't even enter my mindset that oh i shouldn't i shouldn't go i trust that god's going to protect me he's called me to this i trust the holy spirit to lead me into all truth as, as john 16 13 says and if i'm not supposed to go he will tell me hey um, sit this one out, champ. Uh, don't go. He's never done that. Um, and I've never run into any situation like that. But he's always not only protected me, but and allowed me to have the energy to do what I need to do in, in ministry obligations and ministry opportunities. Well, let me throw throw this example out there, too. We're seeing a lot of challenges in the airline industry. Sure. I'll throw that out there. But if God told me to hop a plane and go to a conference, yeah. then I'm going to hop a plane and I'm going to go to a conference. And I know that I'm going to get there safely. Mm-hmm. We used to fly to a particular conference every year. Yep. And we had we had been questioning why we weren't driving because it was a drivable distance. And we had some inconveniences one year. And we said, you know what, we're going to drive the next time. And and it was wonderful. But if God told us to fly again, mm-hmm. we'd fly. Exactly. You know, it's like I'm not I I have flown halfway around the world yeah. in different times and I don't even want to know the number of, of miles I've put in, in airplanes over the years. But is that gonna be my first choice? Well, no, because it's a hassle. But I'm certainly not afraid of it. Even all the things that are happening and all the things that are being reported, you know, even, you know, as of this recording, even even a few days ago, you see airlines skidding off the runway and dropping a tire and all of this crazy stuff. But if God's telling you to do something, Mm -hmm. he's going to, A, provide the way to do it and B, protect you while you do it. Yeah, empower you to do what he's called you to do.
and there's it, there's been plenty of things that have happened to to people uh, bad things have happened to me but i would encourage anyone listening that just because bad things have happened to you don't let your mindset be all the things that could possibly go wrong that's where fear is really stirred up in your life oh if if i if this happens then this will happen or potentially this could happen oh it's foggy a deer could run out in front of me i would encourage everyone to not let those thoughts prevail on that second corinthians 10 5 tells us that we are to take every thought captive into the obedience of christ and that's where going to what you said our thoughts are not necessarily God's thoughts. He says his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. His ways are higher than our ways. But when we take that thought and we dwell on it and we turn it into a problem, then we have violated that scripture of taking every thought captive. Mm -hmm. We violated the scripture in Philippians that says, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things of holy, whatsoever things are of good report, If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things, you know, and Romans 12, 2 tells us to renew our mind, not to be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of our mind. That's where we really have to get our thought life under control when it comes to this, this concept of fear and doing it under the guise of wisdom. It's, it's fear, it's uncontrolled thoughts, it is the opposite of faith. Yeah, we cannot be so cautious that it, it prevents us from doing what God has called us to do. And I think about, when we're talking about the context of what we learned from 2020 and, and how we almost made it noble to stay home so we don't infect other people. That was how insidious the devil was and using those kind of that mentality and that why that stuck around it because it does it sounds noble oh i'm protecting my fellow person or my fellow church goers and i was as the holy spirit was given this to me he he was very clear he said it's not our job to hypothetically protect god's fellow creation that's not your job it's god's job god will protect his creation and tether accurately said you know if you're contagious you know you're contagious you're you're running a fever then obviously don't go to church but if it's just eh, i just i just don't feel good or or you've got like like i did getting comfortable not going because you didn't feel 100 percent, then use that as an excuse but uh that mentality that oh i've got to protect other people you can get that out of your spirit or you heard that somebody else in the church might be sick right possibly and Maybe. and if they are, they're staying home because they're a smart person. But we say, I don't want to take a chance. Yeah. Or I'm not, I, you know, maybe somebody that's been around them will be there. And, and we hear some varying opinions on, on what sounds good mm-hmm. and what sounds like wisdom. And, and that's, really where the holy spirit got after us yes and and kind of said quit looking at other people to determine what's the right thing for you yeah if you're saying oh there's a chance i could get sick that is the opposite of faith go with that faith and we heather and i talked about in in second third episode of this that how you build up your faith by declaring verses those promises of god over your life so don't think that we've got it all figured out or we have a greater level of faith. In fact, I mean, this this faith is for everybody. This is, anybody can have that expectation that God is going to protect them physically, uh, you know, for, or from illness or any of that kind of thing. Matter of fact, when we're talking about everybody having faith, one of my favorite examples of this in the Bible is Galatians 2.20. And I choose to read the King James Version on this because the way it reads it says that we are crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. In that particular version, it actually says that we have the faith of Christ. 
we have that level of faith that Christ had. We can attain that, not in a blasphemous way or, you know, not saying that we are the same as, as Jesus and or anything like that. But he wants us to exhibit that faith. He was in his earthly ministry. Um, he was constantly saying what great faith and rewarding great faith when he would see it from a centurion or the woman with the issue of blood or, or the, the leper. You know, his faith to come forward and risk death um, is why Jesus healed him. Well, how many times did Jesus say, your faith has yeah. made you whole? Exactly. But, you know, there's a scripture, and, and I'm going to throw this out there. There's a scripture that says that when Jesus returns, will he find faith in the earth? Hmm. It feels, especially when you when you read some of the shorter prophet books of the old testament it feels very much like reading today's headlines right in the news and so many of of what we see there and what we what we read is is very common because ecclesiastes tells us there's nothing new under the sun and the devil doesn't have any new tricks so a lot of this is just stirring up these things and I just keep coming back to that. When Jesus comes, will he find faith in the earth? Right. A few weeks ago, you know, we did an episode. Uh, I did an episode with Dr. Carolyn called, Is Faith a Hard Thing? We sometimes make faith and walking in faith and the idea of faith to be such a big thing that it's something that we can never attain. Right. An unre unrealistic goal. But each one of us has a measure of faith. Yep. And then it becomes up to us to grow that faith. Like we talked about in the second episode, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Yep. Going back to that, that's where we have to really say, are we going to live by faith in the by the faith of the Son of God, as it says there in Galatians 2.20. And are we going to do what the scripture tells us? And I think it's also still in Second Corinthians. It says we walk by faith and not by sight. Yeah. We can't go by what we see. We can't go by what we hear. We can't go by our natural senses. Yep. God is a spirit and they that worship him will worship him in spirit mm -hmm. and in truth. And the scripture tells us that the Holy Spirit is going to guide us into all truth. That's right. So that's where we have to really trust him and lean into his wisdom and not get into this fear-based, quote unquote, wisdom that's really wisdom of man, which is leavened, which yeah. really just needs to be thrown out. Exactly. Yeah. So when the Holy Spirit was giving this to me, he was saying some things very clearly. He said, we are not being noble by adding the world's knowledge to the faith God gives us. Uh, such actions only poison our faith. This is not just important to us in the body of Christ, but it uh, is an example to those still lost in this world. And to reach the lost in this narrowing age, we must appear different, more attractive than what the world offers. What if, what if the lost saw men and women of God walking in the joy and victory Jesus has already purchased for us a people determined to do what God has called them to do, unstymied by the guesswork of man's supposed wisdom. And for anyone who's listening to this, if you're a new believer or you've been in the faith for many, many years, we're thankful for everyone that takes the time to listen. Uh, there's a greater, not only can we improve our individual lives, but there's a greater calling, as we talked about the mandate that Christ had for us to save the lost that are out in this world. And it feels as if time is getting very short and we have to be different from what we have to be offer something different that the world offers. We have to walk differently. We have to be attractive and walking in that victory is something that the world does not do. The world, especially now walks in fear, walks in anger, walks in selfishness. We have to be different. We have to ref reflect that. And if we're adding our own negative life experiences and the, and the bad things that have happened to us and diluting God's word and his promises for us, they'll never see it. 
Yeah. I mean, and that's why the scripture tells us to be salt and light. Yeah. If we stay home, we've put our light under a bushel. Yep. The bushel of our own roof. If we isolate ourselves, we've taken away our salt. We've taken away our ability to season those around us. We learn from other people. We learn, none of us, you know, the scripture says we know in part and we prophesy in part. None of us has it all together. There's a reason the Holy Spirit really challenged us with this. Because in the example I gave last week, when we recorded this, that excuse was four days old. Right. You know, it's not like I'm patting myself on the back saying, I never struggle with this. Mm -hmm. This is something all of us struggle with. This is something that the Holy Spirit is dealing with all of us on. And it's like, who... It goes back to that scripture that says, whose report are you going to believe? Yeah. A lot of times in the scriptures, when what looked like defeat, what looked like certain death, what looked like a loss, wound up being the greatest victory. Think about the Israelites. You've got the Egyptian army on one side and the, and the Red Sea on the other. That looks like death. Think about in Jesus' time, Mary and Martha sent word to Jesus that Lazarus was sick. Lazarus died. It looked bad. But Jesus still had work to do. Lazarus still had work to do. There are many times I'm I'm thinking about like, I believe it was Elisha, when his servant, they're surrounded. And his servant is like, there's all these people going to kill us. And Elisha says, God, open his eyes. And they saw all the angels on the hills. And they saw that the number that's with us is way outnumbering the number that's against us. I think about the time that God killed, what was it, 185,000 Assyrians overnight? Yeah. There's so many times, if you look, at the natural, if you look at what it looks like to our natural eyes, to our natural senses, it's going to look bad. You know, maybe you get a bad report from the doctor. That's not the end. And I think what we, what I would encourage you to take from this, if, if you can, is this notion that God has something bigger and better that isn't corrupted by fear. And I would encourage you to press in and seek him for that in that moment. Yes, absolutely. Um, I'm reminded of a, a great scripture. That's uh, Acts 5. I think I'll start reading it. 27. And when they had brought them, they set them before the council, and the high priest asked them, saying, Did we not strictly command you that you not teach in his name, meaning Jesus? And behold, you have, you have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. And that's what we're, the, really the crux of this is. Are we going to? As Heather said, we're going to believe God's report or, or man's report for our lives. God is not surprised at the events that have happened in the last several years and the fallout from it now. Uh, but he has a plan and a destiny for all of us. And the encouragement I would have for anyone listening is, you know, if this applies to you, are there areas of your life that you have let uh, yourself get comfortable or maybe you were like me and and God identified something negative in me before it got to be a, a real problem, which I'm thankful for. I, I don't despise correction. Uh, so I'm not a fool, at least in that regard. So I'm thankful for him correcting me before it was a problem. And feel free to say, you know, for every we thank everybody that's stuck around and, and 
these multiple episodes. We didn't think it was going to spin off into quite what it was, but we're thankful to go where the Holy Spirit takes us. And what are your thoughts for anyone that's listening? Uh, what are your thoughts? What are your experiences? Are, are you getting anything out of that? Or feel free to share that in the comments. And we hope you got something out of it. We're always appreciative of anybody that's taking their time and effort to listen and to, to grow. And we appreciate you going on the journey with us. Absolutely. And that's a great way to wrap up this series. We, uh, again, thank you all for listening to, to this four week long series on the leaven of man's wisdom. And, and I pray you're, you're encouraged because that's, that's our heart is to encourage you. Seek the Lord and be challenged. You know, it's okay for us to be challenged. You know, we were challenged. So, so when we get challenged, we like to challenge you too, because we don't like being alone in challenge. (laughs) Iron iron sharpens iron. (laughs) Exactly. So uh, until next week, be blessed, my friends.